Good morning. Let me tell you, I am extremely excited to be here this morning. I get the opportunity to stand before all of you and to tell you about the inspiration of my life, Morgan, and to tell you how she has played such a major role in my life and the lives of so many people who have special needs. Now, before I get into all the details of that, I want to back up a little bit and tell you how I got to this point. As was mentioned, I was in the home building business, land development business, started when I was 19 and really loved the business and had an opportunity for 21 years to really get the business to run exactly like I wanted it to. I had an opportunity to get into the mortgage business, title business, all sorts of different businesses. And then 2005 came and a company out of California said, we won't put you in retirement. And if you remember back then, business was really booming. Things were wild and crazy in the economy. And so I said, okay. So I sold the companies, and then I went from the day of running numerous companies to the point of then going, okay, what am I going to do in the second half of my life? So many opportunities came to me. I had an opportunity to get into different businesses, reinvest in big ways, and do some neat stuff. But I also had the opportunity to take my daughter to school, something I never had a chance to do. I was able to go to Morgan's birthday parties and get to know her friends and talk to them and talk to parents. You see, let me tell you a little bit about Morgan. Morgan just turned 18 years old. But Morgan has special needs. Morgan has a tough time adding two plus two. She can get there, but you got to work at it with her. Morgan has a tough time reading a simple sentence. She'll get there, but it, it's tough, and she'll get frustrated. She'll get upset at herself and wish she was someone else. Morgan is someone who has 26 screws in her back and two rods and two hangers to allow her to stand up straight. But let me tell you what Morgan has that's more important than anything. She has an attitude that is absolutely incredible. Every night when we put her to bed, she has a smile on her face. Every morning, she has a smile on her face. She has gone through all these different obstacles and things, but always keeps an attitude that is incredibly strong. And so through that inspiration and the opportunity to talk and see more and understand more about the special needs community, instead of all the opportunities that may exist from a business perspective, I decided maybe the second half of my life should be dedicated towards something else. And that was all because of the inspiration and the attitude of this wonderful young lady. Now, what does that mean? Well, what I thought I had should do is build a foundation or form a foundation, which I did. And we do numerous things. But one of the things that we wanted to do is we wanted to go out and build something or things as we were building the foundation that would be here for a long term. Whether that be building medical facilities or different things in the community, such as schools, et cetera, that would be here long-lasting to help the special needs community. But then something happened about five years ago that really caused what I'm here to talk about today, and that is Morgan's Wonderland. You see, we were on a family trip, and Morgan loves to go swimming. She doesn't really know how to swim, like a, and she's not real good at it, but she loves to flap around in the water and do what kids do. We went down to the pool at the hotel, and it was late in the day. It was a smaller hotel and a smaller pool, and there were three kids at the other end of the pool. And they were two of them were throwing a ball back and forth. And Morgan and I were in the pool. I got out, and Morgan, I saw, was slowly inching her way over. And she wanted to play with those kids. She couldn't tell them that. She didn't know how to really bring about that interaction. So what happened is, is Morgan started moving closer and closer. She eventually hit the ball. She got that close, and the kids were looking at her like, what are you doing? Morgan just wanted to play. What happened at that point is where this all happened. Those nice kids grabbed the ball, and they all got out of the pool. They got out of the pool because they didn't know what it would be like to really explore the, ha the, the joy and the happiness of playing with someone who maybe couldn't verbally say exactly what she wanted, but she was just like them in so many ways. But because they didn't understand that the interaction of play did not occur. As Morgan turned around, I saw her face, and I thought to myself, oh, my God, 
She just looked at me like, I don't get it. She didn't say anything. She went back. I jumped in the pool. We played. As I sat there and we, we continued on for a couple weeks I, after that vacation, I kept thinking about that turn of Morgan's head to me and the look that she had. And I have to tell you, I kept thinking about it, thinking about it. And I said, there's got to be a place that I can, we can take Morgan to where everybody understands what's going on there in the element of play. And there will be interaction between those who have special needs and those who don't have special needs. I didn't know what that meant. So I thought, well, I'll call some people. I'll go around and look at different parks in the country just to see if there's something out there that we could replicate or take Morgan to or do something. So somehow bring that barrier down to where the next time there are kids in that pool, they'll go, hey, come on over. They'll understand, and that play will occur. So I went around the country, looked at a different, some different places that at least were told that may be in line, and nothing was close. What I found, if anything had anything to tie with special needs, a lot of times it was off the beaten path. It wasn't in the middle of everything else. It was all kind of by itself. And I said to myself, let's do one of these in San Antonio. What is this? I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to do it. So I invited a bunch of people to a meeting to talk about the idea of building this park. And I just had a sheet of paper behind me that was basically white. And I said, I got this idea. I want to tell you what happened, and we can do better. And I invited doctors and therapists and, and teachers and people who have special needs. And we all spent hours and hours, and hundreds of people showed up. And I thought, this is kind of cool, because we don't really know what we're even going to be talking about totally. And they all showed up, and we went over, and we went over and over and talked about if we built this park with the theory of and the idea of trying to bring down that barrier, what would be in it? Well, what I heard was numerous things, eight and a half pages of single-typed ideas. Then I said, okay, what I want to do is I want to get outside the box. I want to hire people to do this who have never done a park before. I want to hire an architect who's never done a park before. I want to hire an engineer who's never done a park before. I want to hire graphics people who have never done a park before because I'm going to be told by them how you're supposed to build a park, and we're, we're going to be different this time. So all these people who in, did everything for Morgan's Wonderland had never done it before. And that was the cool part. What they had, though, was some real grassroots ideas presented by people in the middle of it all, the people who really work with special needs individuals on a daily basis and understand it, and those who have special needs themselves. What I heard more than anything was, give us a place that is safe. You see, if I have a child who's autistic, to go to the park is tough, because you never know when that child might take a run. Wouldn't it be neat to go to a park and know that somehow, if that child did run, that you could kind of relax for a little bit? So when you go to Morgan's Wonderland, everybody gets an RFID tag. So we know exactly where they are at all times in the park, and you can find them through any of the video screens that exist throughout the park. The reason that exists is so that you can sit there, and if, if Johnny runs off, it's okay. You'll, you can go find him. You'll know exactly where he is, and you'll know everybody in your party within three seconds. We brought that kind of technology in. We also said not only do we want a safe place, but we want a good environment. We want an environment that's a little different. What does that mean? Well. Think about it. If you're in a wheelchair and you go to these wonderful places, do a great job from an ADA perspective, Disney World and all these places, but the crowds and the time it might take to do something and the impatience of people because they aren't sometimes old. At Morgan's Wonderland, let's build a place that maybe could hold 4,500 or 5,000 people, but let's not ever have more than about 1,500 or 2,000 in there. Let's build it bigger so that the environment is one to where if you want to get onto a carousel and it takes longer because our carousel allows no matter what your physical or, or mental special need may be, that we will allow you an opportunity to get on that carousel. And if it takes 10 minutes, see at the culture of Morgan's Wonderland, it's okay. We'll help you and get you on that carousel. And everybody is patient because that's what Morgan's Wonderland is about. There is no other carousel like the one at Morgan's Wonderland. There is no other off-road adventure ride like the one at Morgan's Wonderland. There is no other train like the one that is at Morgan's Wonderland. These aren't big magical ideas. What we did basically at Morgan's Wonderland, I'm so proud of the people who had never done this before, but they said this, look, we are going to design a park for special needs, but we're gonna build it for everyone. Because when you walk into Morgan's Wonderland, it looks like any other park. You don't see ramps and all that kind of stuff. It's a place where you walk in and go, 
I can play here, whether I have a special need or not. But those who do have special needs, they can do everything. We take the most fragile children and adults, those who are on ventilators, those who sometimes, unfortunately, just have three days to live, who say, and the family says, can they come over there and have an opportunity? We had a child come to Morgan's Warner Land that three days before he died, he had an opportunity, he smiled. He had that because he was able to do what he wanted to do, and the family knew what he wanted to do, and he couldn't have done it anywhere else in the world except at this unique park. Now, as I talked earlier, when I got to know Morgan's friends and, and families and stuff, what I found out is Morgan was really one of the lucky ones. You see, Morgan has what she needs. She has a physical therapist and the doctors and, the, and all that because I've been blessed to be able to give that to her. But see, I've noticed that many times those with special needs don't have always all those economic opportunities to give their child or those who they care for what they really need. So we made it early on a commitment that anyone who comes to Morgan's Wonderland always comes for free. Always comes for free. And it doesn't matter. We don't look it up in a book and define what special needs is. If you say you have a special, needs when you, a special need when you come to the front, you get in for free. We figure if you lie about it, you have a special need. <laughs> and so it's, it, it's, <laughs> it's, it's our approach to saying, we are here because we're gonna give you a break and we're gonna allow it the opportunity that if you wanna come to this park 30 times a year, you come to the park 30 times a year. And you can ride the train seven times if you want to. And we have some children who just stay on the train the whole time, that's what they want. That's, that consistency is what they like. At another place, could they do that? No, no. Now, through this entire process, it's been amazing to see what has occurred. I have to tell you a story about Morgan that kind of gives you a sense of what a place like this does. And people always ask me, what does Morgan like to do when she goes to the park? Well, at first, all she would do is go on the swings. We have 35 swings, five different kinds. Whether you're in a wheelchair or whatever you're physical or, or mental special need may be, you can swing at Morgan's Wonderland. Morgan would just go on the swing. I said, Morgan, let's go on the carousel. No, she wouldn't get close to it. She was scared of it. I said, Morgan, let's go. No. Okay, Morgan, let's go stand next to the carousel. Okay, finally she did that. Then Morgan, after a while, eventually said, I said, Morgan, let's just go and sit on an animal. No. Okay, finally she did that. Then we got her on an elephant. Couldn't, couldn't go, just we'll sit on. And then Morgan, and then getting her off the elephant was interesting, we'll go into that. <laughs> but then the next time we went, Morgan said, I wanted to go to the carousel. And when she went to the carousel, now she'd get on it and she would go one time real slow. Remember, everybody else is in the park and enjoying the park with her at this point. No pressure. There's no pressure. It's just simply. But here's the neat thing. Morgan now, when she goes to the park, goes to the carousel first and rides it on her own. Okay, well, why is that a big deal? Well, Morgan now, when she finished it the first time, she looked at me and said, are you proud of me, Dad? Yeah, and that's what happens at Morgan's Wonderland. You take a child who it seems like a small thing to ride on a carousel, that's a big deal. Little things is, are big things. And at Morgan's Wonderland, through play, they learn. They learn that they have the opportunity to achieve something, just as even if it's a small thing, just riding a carousel. Morgan doesn't want me near the carousel when she rides now, because she does it independently. And it's taught her something. And on the 26 different attractions that fit in this $35 million park, ultra accessible park, it gives opportunities to thousands, tens of thousands, and I'm happy to say over 200,000 people in such a short period have already been through the park. Not just from here. Matter of fact, one out of two people who come to this park don't even come from this area. They come from outside here. They come from outside this, this state. They come from outside this country. 34 different countries have been represented at Morgan's Wonderland already. And here's the neat thing. We don't have a marketing budget. It's all done by word of mouth because those who have special needs and those who are caregivers and those who are involved in this whole thing are really tight-knit people and they're starving for something like this. I didn't know that at first, I knew there, were, but I did after I had that first meeting where everybody said, yeah, there's something here. But what was the neatest thing about that meeting is once that happened and started, 
is that how this community and the community even outside the city all join together. You see, we just started this idea in 2007 when we actually started saying, let's talk about this. We finished it 39 months later. We'd raised almost all the money. We were about five, six million dollars still short of raising all the full 35 million dollars. But we did it because of passionate people who came together quickly and said, the time has been too long for something like this. Remember, 5.5% of the population requires assistance every day or they cannot make it through their... 15% their, of the population has special needs. We're not talking a, a million people. We're talking 50 million people in this country who are special needs. It's a big, big number. And we're just scratching the surface. Since we don't have a marketing budget, it's word of mouth, but we are seeing people come from all over and finding all ways. Make-A-Wish, we are one of the top locations for Make-A-Wish. People come here because this is a place, they can go anywhere, but Morgan's Wonderland is special. It is a special place for our special friends and for all those. It's not just about the special needs individual, though. It's about everybody being able to play together. Three out of four people who come to Morgan's Wonderland don't have a special need. You see, they join in with those who have a special need, and it brings down that barrier that happened in that pool. Because then that child who is 21 years old, who has the mental capacity of a five-year-old, who's playing in that sand circle, feels very comfortable, and he's got eight-year-olds and 12-year-olds playing right around him. And that brings down that barrier, and that allows him, who could go nowhere else and play in a sand circle, the opportunity to do that, but do it in an environment that he loves, a place that he feels safe, his family feels comfortable, and everybody is working in conjunction for the element of inclusion. That's Morgan's Wonderland. That's Morgan's Wonderland. Now, when you let people, a lot of them in for free, and you put on a lot of free things, you don't, you're not going to make money, and that's what Morgan's Wonderland is not about. It's not about selling tickets. It's about offering a service. Now, how do you do that? Well, I wanted to put something together, working with a lot of wonderful people that would would do two things. One being economics, and one being about explaining that whole element of inclusion. And that is next to Morgan's Wonderland is a 75-acre soccer park. So people always ask me, I don't get it, Gordon. Soccer, especially, I don't get it. Soccer plays a big role. Why soccer? Well, in, my, in our thoughts, and my feeling about all this, is that we need to bring something to San Antonio. And there's a sport in San Antonio that I didn't feel was really being properly dealt with from the standpoint of giving quality facilities to. And that was soccer. So I said, why don't we take something, help the overall community, tie it next door to a special needs, a park that is for those with special needs in the entire community, so when thousands of people come and play soccer on these four, uh, uh, 14 different fields, they will get that and ask the question, what is that? And then it will bring awareness. You see, it brings awareness. So you do something good with the community, you bring awareness, but then you do another thing. We rent those fields, and through renting these top quality fields, we bring money over to Morgan's Wonderland to help with the operations of it. It's incredible. You can go there and see 7,000 people on a weekend play soccer on these fields when these big tournaments come. And these tournaments don't just come from San Antonio or this region. They come from around the state and around the country. But when they come here, they learn. They learn, and it brings the exposure up of those who have special needs in the idea of inclusion. So let's take it one step further. Last year, we bought a pro soccer team, and we're bringing it to San Antonio. They'll start play. <laughs> They'll start play in six months across the street from Morgan's Wonderland, but then there's going to be a community stadium built right across the street from Morgan's Wonderland. And so through that, through the Scorpions, through all the different events that occur in this community stadium that is being built all with private funds, what will ultimately happen is we will bring hundreds of thousands of people in, and through the most popular sport in the world, every time that tra team travels around North America competing, it will be able to talk about soccer, but it will also be able to talk about Morgan's Wonderland. And what is Morgan's Wonderland? It's a place of inclusion. We all bring people together. So it plays a revenue source because money from that will ultimately go to Morgan's Wonderland, 100% but it will also bring awareness to what it's all about. So Morgan's Wonderland is not just about the sticks and bricks. To me, it's about a movement. It's about an approach of being able to do something different. It's about the idea of saying, the time is now to get outside the box. 
Let me end with one little thought. I get letters and emails from people all the time, basically daily, telling me about Morgan's Wonderland. I love reading them. But I got one the other day I want to share with you, and it's this, lady who, this young lady who was leaving with her daughter who was autistic. And as they were walking out to the car, the young daughter said, Mom, did we just leave heaven? And when she told me that, I thought to myself, we've got a little heaven here on earth at Morgan's Wonderland. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you.